The GameCube version of Batman Rise of Sin Shu has pointless and tedious connectivity with the Game Boy Advance version. So what happens when the console version is linked with the handheld version? Well, there are two options and both require a good deal of work and commitment. Here's the thing, the GBA version doesn't have a save feature. So you can either A, play through the entire GBA game in one sitting which takes hours and hope your battery doesn't die, or option B, cheat by looking up passwords online. When connected, the first linking option unlocks 3D models of the bad guys in the thug section of the trophy room. And that's it, and it's just as boring and stupid as it sounds. The player is rewarded by passively viewing the 3D character models of the most common enemies. You know, the enemies that you killed a few hundred times during the campaign. But to see all of the thugs, you basically need to be at the end of the GBA game, then connect to the cube version. If you connect with only a few stages into the GBA game, only some thugs will be unlocked. But in short, there is no entertainment value in going through this hassle. The second cube to GBA option at least provides some incentive, but it's a little misplaced and takes coordination. After playing through the GBA version, timed missions become available. The goal here is to reach the exit before time expires, and these GBA stages are poorly designed. It actually took me numerous attempts to figure out how to even beat the first stage because you have to flip switches to unlock doors and there's plenty of verticality, no map, and no indicator, leaving you guessing on where to go or what to do. But if you manage to clear a time stage or two, then link to the GameCube version, the player is rewarded with experience points that can be used to unlock new moves. So instead of starting the campaign with just a boring basic attack, now you can start with a boring basic 3-hit combo. But with these time missions, you essentially need to clear them then immediately link to the GameCube version, again because there's no save feature. Worse yet, there is no password that marks them as complete, at least from what I can find online. So, if you wanted to play the GBA game on the train going to work, then link when you get home, well, you probably can't because you would need to keep your GBA on the whole day and hope the battery doesn't die. Besides, starting with one or two unlockable moves isn't going to sway the cube version's difficulty in your favor anyway. So the GameCube to GBA connectivity in Batman Rise of Sinshu is entirely tacked on, doesn't add any value to the player, and simply isn't practical because of the lack of the handheld save feature. Does anyone care about plainly viewing 3D models that are non-interactive, ones that you've seen a million times during the campaign? No, of course not, and why even include this at all when it takes so much effort? And keep in mind, Rise of Sinshu is a very 4 or 5 out of 10 brawler. Bruce Wayne mourns his parents' murder, but that's nothing compared to the remorse that I feel spending hours making a video about such a lousy and missed opportunity linking feature. But what do you think? Have you ever linked a GBA to a GameCube? How much do you hate Batman Rise of Sin Shu, a Batman villain no one has ever heard of? And how the lack of a save feature basically tells the player it's perfectly fine to cheat your way through the game. Let me know in the comments. And if you want to learn more about GameCube to GBA connectivity, check out my dedicated playlist right here on my channel. Until next time, thank you for watching and game on.